kind of like me right now, the world is not immediately apparent to us. We can't just simply look at the world and know everything there is to know about it and everything else. If we're going to know anything about the things around us, ourselves, and each other, we have to start with what we already know and make a next step to draw a conclusion. Whenever we draw a conclusion, when we take the evidence around us and we draw a conclusion from that evidence, it's called an inference. Logic is the study of inference. And in this course, we're, you know, we're not going to study all there is to know about logic. We simply don't have the time. It would take an unlimited amount of time, literally. In this course, we're going to look at three parts of deductive inference, three parts of deductive logic. We're going to look at terms, propositions, and arguments. Okay, well, to start off, we have terms. So remember, we got to distinguish between terms, propositions, and arguments. Now, a term, that's the smallest unit of this, a term is uh, a word that's used for one and only one meaning, right? A term is a word that's used for one and only one meaning. Now, don't confuse a term for the word itself, right? Words have many different meanings, right? but a term, a word, right, is a collection of letters or sounds. Right? Tree, apple, uh, sky. These are all words. Terms would be what we mean by tree, apple, and sky. So I've said that a term is uh, a word with one and only one meaning, or uh, a word where we use one and only one meaning. Well, immediately you might wonder, wait, what the heck, don't words just have one meaning? Well, well, no, as a matter of fact. Words have lots of different meanings. If you look at the dictionary, you're gonna find uh, quite a few definitions for any given word. Uh, the last time I looked, the word innocent had something like 16 definitions, and it's not an exaggeration, something like 16 definitions. And, you know, it's not infrequent, it's not unusual for us to use a word in more than one way, even in, the, the discourse is sometimes we're not even aware of it. Yeah, you know, um, we could talk uh, you know, just in maybe simple ways or poetic ways, right? You talk about the word blue, right? The word blue can be used either to describe a color or a person's mood, and sometimes both, right? <laughs> um, you know, sometimes you use them interchangeably at the same time, and it can get a little confusing. It can get a little confusing. So, uh, yeah, a, a term is a word used with, only, with one and only one meaning. Well, next up we have propositions. Now, propositions are composed of terms, right? They're not terms, but they're composed of terms. When you put the terms together uh, to create something that's either true or false, that's a proposition. So not just any combination of terms counts, right? So uh, blue, uh, B wood, bookshelf, unit. Well, that's a combination of terms, and maybe there's a meaning for each of those. Uh, but you haven't expressed something that's either true or false. In fact, I've expressed something that's pure nonsense. Right? On the other hand, something like, I am walking on a path. That, that, that's a proposition that expresses something that's true, and it's composed of terms. So not just any sensible <laughs> uh, combination of terms uh, creates a proposition. Right? Um, what time is it? Shut the door. These are both sentences. The first is an interrogative, right? It asks a question. The second is an imperative, right? It gives a command. But neither one expresses something that's either true or false. And if somebody said, what time is it? You said false. That would be weird. And <laughs> you get a reaction of confusion at the very least. Uh, somebody said, shut the door. And you said, that's false. Again, yeah, especially depending on who's telling you, uh, you get probably maybe not the reaction you're looking for. <laughs> so not just any combination sensible combination of uh, terms expresses a proposition. Propositions are only what is true or false, right? So there are trees behind me. That's a proposition. That's a sensible combination of terms that expresses something that's true, namely that there are trees behind me. There is an elephant behind me. That is also a proposition, but it's false. Right? It's still a sensible combination of terms right, that expresses something true or false, and in this case, false. Right? So yeah, a proposition it's composed of terms, and it's what's true or false. 
So just as propositions are composed of terms, uh, arguments are composed of propositions. Right? So terms are words that are used for one and only one meaning. A proposition is a combination of terms that composes uh, something that's true or false. Right? And a uh, argument, well, an argument is something different. That's different from either propositions or terms. brings us to arguments. So terms compose propositions, and propositions compose arguments. Now the way this works is a, one collection of propositions will infer another proposition. Now strictly speaking, there with deductive inference, there can literally be an infinite number of conclusions, but let's just leave that aside, right? For the sake of discussion, let's just assume for you know, right now <laughs> that we're dealing with only one conclusion at a time, right? So you have uh, one set of propositions inferring another. That's an argument. That's an argument. Not just any collection of propositions will do. It has to be that one set of propositions infers another. Now, arguments are composed of two parts. The premises and the conclusion. The premises are those propositions that infer the conclusion. The conclusion is what's inferred by the premises. The premises, in some sense or another, you know, this is debated, but in some sense or another, make the conclusion true, or they justify the conclusion. Yeah. They either make the conclusion true, or they justify the conclusion. That, that's, in some sense, they make it true. Right? And in turn, the conclusion, in some sense, is made to, true, or is justified by the premises. Yeah. So the premises infer the conclusion. Now, again, simply for the sake of explanation, because <laughs> we're not going to go into this in too much detail. Uh, broadly speaking, there are two kinds of arguments. Right? There are inductive arguments and deductive arguments. Now, inductive arguments are arguments where the premises make the conclusion more likely to be true or more probable. Right? And deductive arguments are arguments uh, where the premises, the truth of the premises necessitates the truth of the conclusion. In other words, with deductive arguments, if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. With inductive arguments, the all the premises can be true and the conclusion false. Now, I don't want to jump too much into this because it's a long explanation of the history of uh, logic and philosophy. Inductive arguments are not necessarily bad, right? They give us a lot of really great kinds of knowledge. So, for instance, all of scientific inference is based upon inductive reasoning. That's an, the moving from evidence to conclusion in scientific inference is inductive, not deductive. Whereas uh, an example of deductive inference that you might be familiar with would be mathematics. Mathematics. So if you're dealing with probability, that's inductive. If you're dealing with necessity, that's deductive. I mean, these are all different ways of describing it. None, one is not necessarily more accurate than the rest, but hey, it's a start. <laughs> um, so premises. And conclusion. These compose arguments. The premises in some sense necessitate or justify or make the conclusion true. And the conclusion is in some sense made true or justified by the premises. Well, Spotting the difference between inductive arguments and deductive arguments, it's not really important at this point. Um, probably won't even get to it really during the course of the semester. We're, like I said, we're only going to be dealing with deductive arguments. Okay. Um, now, spotting the difference between inductive and deductive arguments, not really important at this point. But spotting the difference between the premises and the conclusion is. You have to be able to identify the difference between the premises and the conclusion if you're ever, are going, to stand, ever going to understand any argument, including ones that you hear outside of this course. And I've noticed this, that sometimes people are very sloppy with the difference between the premises and conclusion, and they don't really know which to address in discussions. Yeah. Okay. Now, sometimes, you know, like, like I said, uh, Arguments are collections of propositions, which means, grammatically speaking, they're pretty much always going to look like a paragraph, right? <laughs> or a series of paragraphs. 
Uh, now, in these paragraphs, you're going to find, or at least sometimes, you'll find little keywords. Right? And sometimes these keywords are used for the conclusion, and sometimes they're used for the premises. Right? It's rare that you're ever going to have somebody, it'd be nice if they always did this, but it's rare that you're going to have somebody who writes a paragraph and they say, for all the reasons I've just provided, I conclude this. You know, it doesn't always happen. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't always happen. And similarly, you know, it's like, I believe this, da, 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 for these reasons, and one, two, and three, right? It makes for very clear writing if you do that. And somebody can never be mistaken, or not never, but it'd be really hard to be mistaken about what somebody is doing if they actually, you know, did that, but it's not always. So we don't always have the, you know, like these nice full sentences that are telling us exactly what's going on. Instead, there's usually some little cue words. So for conclusions, uh, you'll find cue words like uh, therefore, uh, so, thus, in conclusion, in summation, right? Or actually, in summation isn't always used. That's probably not a, that's not a good word, good phrase for uh, conclusions. But, you know, these little cue words, right? So. It's gray outside, it's slightly cool, and the uh, barometer uh, is dropping? Dropping. Uh, the barometer is dropping. For these reasons, right. I conclude it is going to rain. Now that'd be a nice, long, drawn-out way of saying it. Almost never happens. Instead of something like, wow, you know, the temperature's dropping, it's cloudy, the barometer's dropping, so it's going to rain. Right. <laughs> that little so. That's your Q word, that that's the conclusion. There are also sometimes Q words for uh, premises, right? Uh, since, for, because. Right? So to take that same example, say, it's going to rain since the barometer's dropping, the temperature's dropping, and it's getting more cloudy. That, that little Q word, since, that indicates uh, the premises for that short little very bad argument. <laughs> um, now these keywords, these are going to be helpful to, in finding the difference between the premises and the conclusion. And as I said, it is necessary to find the difference between the premise and the conclusion. However, <laughs> um, these keywords can't replace your ability to comprehend. Now if you do, you're going to be fooled for the rest of your life. No, it, it, these keywords can be helpful, at the very least, it can be helpful in, in ascertaining the frame, the framework of the author's mind. But you should also not let the keywords replace your ability to reason. Okay. You have to comprehend what's provided for you in writing better than the author has written it. This is just a sad fact of life. You have to comprehend better than the author who's provided it. Now, like I said, these keywords, sometimes these keywords aren't going to be there, and sometimes they're going to be there badly. Right? So you have to comprehend, you have to understand the meanings of the terms to figure out the difference between the premises and the conclusion. So take a look at this set of propositions. So as I said, um, these paragraphs aren't always going to have word cues to indicate what's the, you know, which are the premises and which are the conclusion, and they are sometimes maybe they're just not labeled very well. Um, so you have to, you know, word cues are nice, they're helpful, but they can't replace your ability to comprehend and understand what's going on in the paragraph. So you, you look at these sentences here, right? I have them out of order, purposely have them out of order as far as, you know, which one is the conclusion, right? I didn't just put it at the bottom. You, you also shouldn't think that the conclusion is always just going to be the last sentence. That isn't the case, right? But you know, just looking at the these sentences here, right, what, what can you tell from them looking at these? Uh, we never know that any of our perceptual beliefs are true. We are sometimes mistaken in our perceptual beliefs. Uh, if we are sometimes mistaken in our perceptual beliefs, then we never know that any of our perceptual beliefs are true. Okay. Well, what do you notice right away about these propositions? Does one seem like it really needs to be proven? <laughs> you know, is it more, how should we say, uh, implausible than the rest? Uh, what's the structure of the sentences? How do they relate to each other? I mean, you know, whether... Uh, a proposition is a premise or conclusion is going to depend upon the relationship it has to the other pro uh, propositions. Okay. <clears throat> so even just look at these, which one of these looks the most likely to be true? 
Well, you know, we're sometimes mistaken in our perceptual beliefs. Well, yeah, that happens a lot, right? We make mistakes about colors or shapes or whether, you know, whether or what the thing is off in the distance. That's the most probable thing, right? Uh, if it's the most probable thing, then yeah, chances are it's, it's going to be a premise, because right? the uh, conclusion is going to depend upon the premises. Mm. Um, well, you, you know, if that's a premise, well, well, look at that third proposition there. Right? It has the first, yeah, the first part of that third proposition is is that you know we are sometimes mistaken our perceptual beliefs, and then it, according to that, you know, that third proposition. Well, if that's true, then we never know that any of our perceptual beliefs are true. Okay. It, you know, maybe you don't necessarily buy that, but, you know, it's at least a link between that second proposition and the first proposition, right? It's the, you know, kind of direction of the argument there, right? So it's it's that first proposition here. You know, we never know that any of our perceptual beliefs are true. That's the conclusion. The last two are supposed to be premises, evidence for that first proposition. And that's just given by the, the structure of the argument, the relationship of the premises to each other, and you know which, uh, which proposition is the most plausible of the, of the rest. Well, spotting the difference between premises and conclusion, that's one essential skill in dealing with logic. Another essential skill is spotting whether you're actually dealing with an argument, right? Just as not any, not, you know, not every, excuse me, <laughs> not every sensible collection of terms composes a proposition, right? not every sensible collection of propositions composes an argument, right? There are lots of different kinds of paragraphs besides arguments. There's, you know, simply statements of belief, right? So people just kind of expounding what they believe. The lovely day, the, the temperature is nice, uh, nice and cool. I'm not sweating. Uh, have, uh, there's no rain to ruin my day. Uh, and I enjoy the uh, cloudiness because of uh, you know, decreasing illumination. Right, maybe I'm just talking about how much I'm enjoying the day. There's no argument there. There's no uh, inference from premises to conclusion. It's just me simply talking about my day. And people do this a lot and kind of mistake it for an argument. They just sit there and say, this is what I believe. And they, they start really, therefore you must believe this too. Like, well, why? You just told me what you believe. You haven't given me a set of evidence. You haven't given me evidence for a conclusion. You know, sometimes people are, like I said, sometimes people are just providing statements of what they believe or they're being funny. Right? They're telling a humorous story. Well, humor is not an argument. Right? And it's unfortunate that in today's day and age, we get persuaded by humor quite a lot, uh, but humor is not an argument. We think, aha, that person's witty. They made something funny, therefore they said something true. Like, no, that doesn't work either. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, there's a big difference between an argument and an explanation. Even though, by the way, they, they kind of look structurally the same as far as paragraphs are concerned. Remember those Q words that I mentioned? Well, sometimes Q words are used for the you know, conclusion of an explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the temperature, you know, we'd say something like, well, oh, okay, so let, let me just start this way, right? An explanation is different from an argument. An argument is supposed to persuade you of the conclusion. The premises are supposed to justify uh, the conclusion, right? That somehow make the conclusion true. Uh, an explanation is not like that. An explanation doesn't justify its, con you know, conclusion. It's not really conclusion. I'm just doing this, you know, scare quotes from the man. It's not really, it's not its conclusion. Uh, the premises don't justify, the evidence doesn't justify the conclusion. Rather, with an explanation that explains why the conclusion, okay? Uh, not whether the conclusion, but why the conclusion. So uh, explanations presume the conclusion is true, right? And what's given is simply an explanation for why, you know, why it is the case. So for instance, I've got this tree here, right? I can say something like this. Uh, I could say um, a seed fell on the ground, germinated, 
uh, took root in the soil through a process of nutrition, hydration, and you know, shade and, and proper environment, the, the tree came to be. None of you doubt that the tree exists, right? It's right here. None of you doubt that the tree exists. What I provided is not a justification that the tree exists. If I were to say, I will prove this tree exists, you'd say, what? <laughs> That's a little crazy. <laughs> uh, if I said instead, I will explain how this tree came to be. Okay, well, that's an explanation. <clears throat> so explanations presume the conclusion is true. Now, suppose I did something different. Suppose I said, I will prove to you that this tree has been around longer than San Antonio, Texas. That's probably going to need some evidence, right? You're going to need some kind of justification for that. Um, yeah, I, it might be the case that some of the people watching this video are familiar enough with botany where you understand this right away or you know you can understand those true right away um i have a very poor grasp of the age of trees but i think this tree is somewhere around 20 or 30 years old it's not older than san antonio texas okay. uh, if i were to claim that i could prove that's older san antonio texas well that would be an argument right that conclusion is that's uh, yeah, that's something that really needs to be proven. Even my claim that this tree is 20 or 30 years old, you're probably still at this point saying, I, I, want, I, I want to know why that's true. I, I want to know what evidence or justification you have for that. And now maybe all of a sudden you're interested in the age of trees. <laughs> so spotting, and you know, as I said earlier, spotting the difference between premises and conclusion is an essential skill. Spotting whether you're in fact dealing with an argument as opposed to some other kind of paragraph or series of paragraphs, that's also an essential skill. Right. That's also an essential skill. So, uh, hey, let's take a look at a few examples. So the exercise here is to determine whether this is an argument. Well, let's take a look at this paragraph. Uh, so you're just kind of reading it over, right? Does anything strike you as maybe the conclusion or the point or what they're trying to get you to believe for, for this particular paragraph? Uh, we have organisms sinking into deep water means death. Plant cells can't photosynthesize. Fish and other animals lose contact with the surface food supply. And then they become food for strange deep living, deep living predators. That's a frightening phrase, isn't it? Strange deep living predators. That's a little scary, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't realize the logic class was going to be frightening in, in this way. Well, which of these sentences is supposed to, I don't know, what, which ones, which propositions lead to a point to or justify the others? Uh, well, it's not that, you know, plant cells can't photosynthesize. It's somehow justified by fish and other animals you know, uh, that descend, right? It's not like the second pro proposition is justified by the third. And the f it's not even justified by the first either, right? I mean, maybe that would be an example. The second proposition might be an example of the first, but it's not justified by the first. Same thing goes with the third one, right? It's not justified by the second or the first proposition. In fact, it's that first proposition that is you know, you're kind of being led to <laughs> by the, by the uh, second and the third, right? This is the main point. Organisms at the sea surface sinking into deep water usually means death. Okay, now, okay, so this really looks like it's the main point of the paragraph. Uh, is it an argument? Do you, does, do you need to be persuaded of the fact? Does, right? does this need to be justified by the other two? Well, no, right? We could just simply observe organisms at the sea surface sinking into deep water, right? That That's not hard to figure out, right? That we just observe them doing this. Uh, how, you know, how do we justify that organisms at the sea surface, you know, you know, you know, they, they sink and that usually means that we watch it happen. <laughs> the second and the third uh, proposition in this paragraph are explaining or you know, giving examples or uh, uh, you know, trying to illustrate the first. Right. So this isn't an argument, it's an explanation. Right. It's an explanation. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, so here we have a statement about young people at universities trying to achieve knowledge, not learn a trade. Uh, must learn. We all must learn how to support ourselves, but we must also learn how to live. We need a lot of engineers in the modern world, but we do not need 
but we but we do not need a world of modern engineers. Okay. Now, is there a conclusion or right, a main point for all of this? Uh, does one of these propositions you know, infer, or does the, you know some of the propositions infer the the remaining? I mean, we got three pro propositions here. Um, I I would be impressed if you can <laughs> if you have a uh, an you know one of these propositions is actually a conclusion. Um, now, at best. Right, this is an explanation, and even then, I wouldn't. I don't even think it is an explanation. It looks like a statement of belief to, to my eyes. We got three propositions here. They're really not related to each other. Right, they're almost each one is almost a rephrase of the main point of the other two. Slightly different take on it, but yeah, right? there's not even an explanation here. This is just a statement of belief. So when you're reading. Uh, these you know reading paragraphs, trying to read uh, passages. Not, you know one essential skill, as I said, one essential skill is to uh, find the conclusion. Another essential skill is to figure out whether you even have an argument here. Well, to sum up, we've looked at the definition of logic. Uh, we looked at uh, the three parts of logic two kinds of arguments, the difference between premises and conclusion, uh, the, uh, even the difference between arguments and other kinds of uh, paragraphs or series of paragraphs. And we've even had a little bit of practice ourselves. We looked at a few examples. So your next step is to practice, right? Take the uh, exercises that are provided uh, through the course and uh, you know, make sure you, you are able to spot the difference between the, or you know, know the difference between these different uh, parts. Uh, so, Practice, have fun, and I'll see you next time.